Welcome to this introduction to Odeon. Odeon is a very comprehensive software for both measuring, but especially for simulating room acoustics. We will first cover the simulation features of Odeon, and in the end of the video, the measurement features. Very simplified, the way Odeon acoustical simulations work is that you import a geometry made in another software. Then you choose the acoustical properties, the materials of all surfaces in the model, and then you set up one or multiple sound sources. With this information, Odeon is able to calculate the room acoustics. However, before doing so, you need to choose what results you're looking for. That could be acoustical parameters like EDT, T20, strength, or C80, at a specific receiver position. Could be bar graphs of results, grid color map showing acoustical parameters over a surface, an audio file of how the acoustic would sound like in the room, and much, much more. If you're looking for a specific kind of result, you can start checking our manual. I will in this video follow this very simplified workflow to give you an idea of the most typical way of using Odeon. It starts with get or make 3D model and import into Odeon. In order to make simulations in Odeon, you need a 3D model of the geometry. This can be imported as, for example, DXF, 3DS, STL, and more. You import by going to File, Import from File, choose your file, where to save it, and Import. But if you do not already have the geometry, we recommend using SketchUp to make the model. Odeon has developed a plugin for SketchUp, making it very easy to export and import the geometry into Odeon. If you're new to the software or using the demo version, Odeon has included a range of geometries and calculations you can start investigating from concert halls, train station, oil rigs, etc. We will in this video use a very simple model of an auditorium in order to show the workflow of Odeon while still keeping this video rather short. You go to File, Open Room and then Find Your Room. If you want to follow, use the room called Example. After the import of the geometry, the next thing to do is to set up the model inside Odeon. The first point is sound sources. You need to set up at least one sound source in order to make calculations in Odeon. But let me just explain how to find your way around Odeon. For using different tools or to set up different aspects of the model, you use either the toolbar with symbols or the drop-down toolbar, where you can also see the shortcuts. These setups include things like sources and receiver setup, material setup, parameter setup, etc. We will here choose source receiver list. As the menu bar is dynamic, a drop-down menu will appear with the active window for the options available. Here we now see that we get a source receiver list drop-down. If we click the 3D edit source receiver, we will get a 3D source receiver drop-down menu. This goes through most of Odeon and is a way for you to find the available tools in that specific window. We'll first show a point source. It can either be found in this local toolbar, the dynamic menu, or control P. Here's the settings for our point source. We can give it a description, point source on podium floor. It can be placed in different ways. Either you can use this grid if it does not need to be at a very accurate position. With hold down left click we can rotate and change the axis, and with control left click we can place the source. The second option is to place it using the pop-up box. You can place it with the numbers here for the free axis X, Y and Z for an accurate position. You can also place it according to a surface in the geometry. It could be if you want the source at a specific distance to the floor or wall. The direction of the source, if important, can be set here. And if we had a receiver already, we could aim it towards that. The directivity of the source can be set down here. But for this example, we'll just stay with the omnidirectional source. You can also edit the gain of different frequency bands, but for most parameters, this will not be necessary. When you leave the pop-up, the source will be saved. Depending on the edition of Odeon you're running, you'll have different types of sources available. I'm here running the combined edition with all tools available. Array sources can be used if you have a loudspeaker array. A line source can be used if you have a pipe or similar longer sound source. In the multi-surface source, you can select one or multiple surfaces that will emit sound. The multi-surface source is practical for factories with machines, a wall emitting sound from another room or similar. Here we choose the podium floor to be emitting sound and name it surface source podium. There are multiple other options for sources and we have a range of videos covering sources and receivers specifically that you can check out. The next thing to set up is the materials. 
In order to make calculations in Odeon, you need to choose the acoustic properties of all surfaces, also called choosing materials. We go to the drop-down toolbar menu and choose Material List. On the left-hand side, we have all the surfaces in the geometry, and on the right-hand side, we have the material list that you can choose from or make your own materials. Materials here mean absorption coefficients only. The materials are sorted into groups like concrete, curtains or glass, but you can also use the search function to find specific materials. When you've found or made the material you want, choose one or multiple surfaces and add the material with Assign Material. Again, you can find your options in the dynamic drop-down menu, Assign Material. If you have added layers in the 3D modeling software, these will be available in the material list as well, and you can sort according to layers. Beside the absorption coefficient from the materials, you can, and should if available, add the scattering coefficients. If you have no clue, you can use the guides in our manual to choose some decent values. You can also use the scattering together with material choice to add the acoustical properties for missing things in the geometry. Here I mean things hanging on the wall or scattered on the floor that are not modeled. An example of this is the audience area. In this model it's just a box, but it's actually supposed to be an audience. By choosing audience as material and setting the scattering to 0.7, it will have the acoustical properties of an audience area, even though roughly modeled. And simplifying is often the preferred way to model in Odeon, often giving better results. We have a video playlist about the material list that goes into more details, but I'll just briefly mention some of the other features. If you have a surface that is only partly solid, like a bookshelf with books but no back, you can use the transparency to say how many percent is acoustically transparent. In case you work on a project concerning sound transmission between rooms, this can also be set up in the material list, if you have the transmission index available for the walls. Now I'll just set the materials for the rest of the surfaces. When working in the material list, it can be helpful to have an idea of the average reverberation time in the room while choosing materials. Therefore, we have implemented the Quick Estimate feature, where you can see the reverberation time based on Sabine's equation. This is not the way Odeon otherwise calculates the acoustics and is less accurate, but it can give you an idea of the reverberation time as well as give you tools to optimize the material choices for a specific reverberation time goal. When your material list is fit for fight, at least for the present moment, you need to set what I here call the accuracy. You can also call it general settings for calculations. It's found in the room setup. Find room setup in the toolbar here, or use drop down toolbar and choose room setup. There are two values you should always set in your Odeon model. The first is the impulse response length. It should be set around or slightly above the reverberation time in your room. If you do not have an idea what this number should be, you can use the quick estimate that I showed earlier in the material list. So let's find the material list again and press quick estimate. Here we can see that we can expect a reverberation time up to around 3.7 seconds. This might not be the case everywhere, but it's a good starting point. We go back to the room setup and enter 3700 milliseconds for the 3.7 seconds. If you later do not get certain results displayed or get stars instead of numbers, you will probably have to raise this number. The second value is the number of late rays. This determines the accuracy of the calculation, but also the calculation time. So it depends on the project you are working on and can of course be changed during your work. There are three preset buttons, Survey, Engineering and Precision, that you can press if you want Odeon to enter a number. But it's better to choose a number yourself that suits the project you're working on. Some projects, for example if there's very uneven absorption, you'll need an even higher number to get consistent results that Odeon will suggest. A good tool to find an idea of the number of rays is the Global Estimate. Find it here or drop down toolbar Global Estimate. It is the global estimate of the reverberation time in the room, or model, and will continue to use more rays until you stop it. You can see the number of rays going up here. When you stop it, you get the energy curves, and you can see the number of rays used here. If you run it very shortly, and thereby with few rays, I'll just do that, you get these bumps in the curves, and if you run it slightly longer, and thereby more rays used, I'll just do that, 
you get more smooth curves. The less drastic these bumps, the more consistent and accurate results will be. On rare occasions, bumps similar to these will be a project of the actual acoustics, but most common it's the lack of raised. So use this to find a good idea of the number of rays needed. But try to keep it a little down, as it will make the calculation time go up a lot. For this project I see that the 12,000 rays suggested of Odeon seems to give quite accurate results. But I will only use 7,000, as I am interested in speed as well. For more on choosing number of late rays, check our manual under number of late rays, and also read the section about curvature under parameters. If you are confused about what these so-called rays are covering, I'll just briefly give a simplified explanation using the 3D Investigative Rays tool in Odeon. Odeon is running a number of well-developed algorithms in the calculations based on the ray tracing method, where the sound is emitted from a sound source as rays. These rays are reflected from the surfaces according to their acoustical properties, absorption, scattering, transparency, etc. From this information, Odeon is able to calculate the acoustics at any position in the room, including direction of the sound. This calculation method is both the fastest and the most accurate for room acoustics. The 3D Investigate Race tool you here see is also used to evaluate if a model is sound tight. If there is a leak from the model because of some surfaces are missing, it can be seen here and the geometry corrected. I have now set the sound sources, materials and accuracy and I'm ready to choose the results I'm interested in. There are some different options. Maybe you want the acoustics at a very specific locations, or maybe you want to see how different acoustic parameters are acting at different areas in the geometry, or maybe you want an average of the duration time in the room. You can check out our website and manual to see more of the results available. Let's start with the fastest one, the average or global estimate. It's the tool we just used, the global estimate here. But instead of just running the calculations, we take the next tab, estimated reverberation time, to get the T20 and T30 for the room, but not any other parameters, as most are quite location specific. And now I'll just show how to export the graph to a report. You set the size and shape you want for the box. You can zoom in with holding down left mouse click to choose the octave band you want to display. And then you copy with Ctrl C, go to your report and paste with Ctrl V. That's quite easy. For most other results in Odeon you need one or multiple receiver position. Let's start with point responses, meaning specific locations in the room. You go to the source receiver list here or in the drop down toolbar menu, source receiver list. Here you will make a new receiver. The position in the room you want the acoustic results for. Choose a new receiver here, in the dynamic drop down menu here and choose new receiver, or Control R. Again you place it either with hold down left click for changing the axis of the grid, hold down right click to move the geometry and Control left click to place. Or you can use the pop up box to give it a specific position here, or to place it in relation to a surface here, 1.5 meters from the floor. You can also view the geometry from this position if you want to add a feel of the position to your report or to get a better idea of where the receiver is located. You give it a name and close to save. You can use the tabulate tool for a receiver as well as for a source. Select the receiver, press the tabulate tool here or in the dynamic drop down menu now called source receiver and select tabulate selected source or receiver. Here you can tabulate, creating multiple receivers with a set distance in a grid. Choose how far between each row and how many repetitions. You can even choose a fixed distance to the nearest surface underneath. So, now we have a source position where the sound is emitted, a room with materials where the sound is reflected and diffracted, and receiver position where we want the acoustics. We're now into the job list to run calculations. It's here or in the drop down toolbar job list. This is where you can set up specific calculations. We use job number one and call it point responses. Here on the left we choose which sources will be active. Then we can choose multipoint, which is the results for the acoustics at the receiver position. Some editions of Odeon also have single point where you get a wider range of results for a specific receiver. Now I press run single job here or find it in the dynamic drop down menu now called job list. Here you see the effect of the number of late rays chosen. A high number will give longer calculation time. The calculation time in Odeon is quite short because of optimized algorithms. But of course if you use a high number of rays 
have many receiver points or use a geometry with very high number of surfaces, the calculation time will rise. After the calculation is done, you can see the multipoint response here or in the dynamic drop-down menu, view multipoint response, while the job is selected. I'll just show some of the result types. In the second tab of the pop-up, we see the acoustical parameters for each point source. These include EDT, T15, T20, T30, SPL, definition, clarity, DJ echo, STI, and much more. After that, we see a comparison for each parameter between the positions. And after that, the average, minimum, and maximum values for parameters. The next tab shows energy bars for the octave band parameters. Toggle between parameters with left and right arrow. And next tab again, energy bars for parameter averages for each receiver point. The last tab here will, in case you have measurements, compare measurements with simulation. I'll show that when I talk about measurements in the end of this video. If we open the single point response instead, either here or in the dynamic drop-down menu, we see some more advanced results as well. These include the energy parameter graph for a single position, decay curves for this point receiver, decay roses to see direction of the sound at different time intervals, the ditch echo curves where you can evaluate echoes, and much more. Again, we can copy any graph like this bar graph of G20 by pressing Ctrl C and paste it to a report with Ctrl V. In some editions of Odeon, you can also listen to the acoustics. This could be a voice, a crowd, or full orchestra. And the sound files and everything needed is included in Odeon Auditorium and Combined. I'll not show that in detail in this video, but you can see our aerialization videos or read in the manual. Besides the point responses, most editions of Odeon can display a color grid map for acoustical parameters. Let's take a look at what that would look like. We go to Define Grid here or in the toolbar drop-down menu. As well as we defined the receivers before, we need to define the receivers for grid calculation. On the left-hand side, we have the surfaces in the room. We choose one or multiple surfaces. Then we set the distance from the surface to the grid that will hover above it, and use these small hands to add them to selected surfaces. Or again, you can find the options in the dynamic menu here, as well as shortcuts. By pressing Show Grid, I see where the grid will be placed and the density. The end result will be interpolated and will be smooth. But here you can see the number of receiver points, one for each square, the grid will be calculated from. It's not necessarily the more the merrier. The calculation time can rise drastically when using grids, and the result might be less smooth with more receiver points. In the manual this is further discussed, as in our videos about grids, but you can also just try yourself. When satisfied, go back to the job list. Now we make a new job where we again select active source, call it grid calculations, check mark grid in the job, and run single job here or in the dynamic menu. Now the density, being the distance between the squares, will influence the calculation time together with the number of rays. After calculation, you can view the grid response here or in the drop down menu here. Job list, view grid response. On the right hand side, you can see what parameter we are looking at, and with left and right arrow, you can toggle between the parameters. Now we look at SPL, and if we go up and down with the arrows, we can see different octave bands. If you want to personalize it even further, go to Options, Program Setup, and Grid Settings, where you can change how the color is displayed. Now I've shown some of the most used results available in the simulation part of Odeon. If we just return to the workflow here, we see that it's an iterative process where you can always go back and change sound source position materials, etc. I'll just briefly show some of the other tools and results you have in Odeon. You can use the billiard ball tools here, or in the drop-down toolbar, 3D billiard, to visualize different acoustical effects like echo or sound distribution. If you have reflectors in your room, you can define them as reflectors in Odeon and see a reflector coverage. So now I define a reflector here and you see the reflector coverage from this source. In the 3D OpenGL, which is here, or in the toolbar 3D OpenGL, you can see inside the room. The materials are colored, so absorption for high frequencies is red, Absorption for low frequency is blue, middle frequency is green, 
and equal absorption is on the gray scale. So here you can see we have a lot of white, which means a low absorption for all frequencies, and some red in the audience area, high frequencies are absorbed, and a window here with low frequencies absorbed. That can make it easier to find reasons in the absorption for specific acoustical effects. But now we will leave the simulation part for a bit, because Odeon also has a very well-developed measuring system for measuring impulse responses. You open it here, on the drop-down toolbar, Measure Impulse Responses. The measurements use the sine sweeps, as they are superior at oppressing background noise, and get the room acoustic measurements even in challenging conditions. Here on the right you see the exit time, the time you need before the measuring starts. You have the duration of the sweep, which is quite important for getting good results. And silence after to get the full impulse response, letting the room ring off. Here choose the output, most often the sound card that is connected to the sound source or the speaker in the measurements. And the receiver, most often the sound card connected to the microphone. And here you can add a calibration file if you have one. After this you can make a sweep. By pressing here you can test and listen to the sweep. And by pressing here you can actually make a measurement. The sign sweep is leaving the sound source and received by the microphone in the room and then directly evaluated by Odeon, making it into an impulse response and calculating a range of acoustical results. First you see the impulse response here. That should look like an impulse response, so unless there's no or little direct sound, it should be a decaying curve. Next is the raw decay curve, where you can see if your signal-to-noise ratio is fine. If not, you can make the sign sweep longer. The sign sweep attenuates the noise level by 3 dB for a redoubling of length. So if you have the time, you can easily get the background noise much lower. If we go to the energy parameters, you have the acoustical parameters, T20, T30, clarity, right away. And you can also see them here in back graphs. Besides this, you have the frequency response. This can be very useful in room acoustics and in testing loudspeaker setups. But if we go to this play tab, it allows you to listen to audio files with the same acoustic as you measure. So you measure the acoustics in room and then you can play an audio file with the acoustics of the room you measured applied to that audio file. If we go back to the measurement setup, I'll just show you one of the advanced settings down here. This allows you to optimize your sign trip based on your first measurement. So if you are in a room with a lot of low-frequency background noise, this sweep will allow more time and thereby lower background noise at low frequencies. The same goes if you have a room with high absorption of high frequencies and thereby maybe a low signal-to-noise ratio for high frequencies, then this sweep will prolong the higher part. The last thing I want to show you regarding the measurements is the comparison between measurements and simulations. To do that, I'll have to open a room where measurements actually exist. And if we go to the job list, and then the multipoint response here, you'll see that there's a comparison between the measurements and the simulations, allowing you to change your model or just validate your simulations. These are the basics of the Odeon acoustical simulation and measuring software. We're trying to make new videos all the time to cover all the specifics and tools in the software. So check out our video page for more insights in the endless possibilities with the Room Acoustic software. My name is Andreas. Have a nice day.